Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to work over on Steam Stoker engine, and today uh, I wanna go ahead and get my connecting rod and crosshead installed now that we've got the new bearings. So we previously poured Babbitt on here, and after I poured the Babbitt, I got a little bit concerned because I didn't have everything connected up, and I was a little bit concerned that we could have had this um, crosshead, a little bit of an angle or something, and it might affect how it works down in the cross slide. I think we're gonna be all right, but ideally we would have poured that with everything properly aligned. Uh, so now, today, what I wanna do is get this installed and make sure that it does work right. And if it does, uh, we will go ahead and get prepped up and ready to pour the Babbitt on the other cross head. Now these cross heads slide in a channel down there. There's a big block of Babbitt. Uh, this is a little bit of, of a backwards Babbitt application. Usually the Babbitt is on the outside of uh, like a bearing or whatever. You got a journal and the Babbitt is on the outside, kind of like a, a bearing journal like this. In this case, you have a trough that's made out of cast iron and the crosshead is sliding on the inside and the crosshead is lined with um, Babbitt, the part that's moving back and forth. So uh, that's the way it was designed and it has worked well over the years. So let's uh, get over here and uh, see if we can start getting this thing back together and check it all out. So uh, let's see what happens. So this is the babbitted crosshead, and this is the part that's gonna slide back and forth in that journal down there. This is just how it came out of the uh, piece over there. You can actually see the linear marks in there where we had planed that, so all that kind of telegraphed over into this, which is fine. Um, Babbitt bearings are typically scraped so that you have oil retention and also to, for some clearance. Right now, this bearing is very tight in there. We want to have a little bit of play in there. So um, I think what I'm going to do before I do anything else is just put a crosshatch scrape pattern on this. Just again, for some clearance, oil clearance, and just to reduce the size a little bit and get some of these irregularities out of there. And then we're going to go ahead and see if it we can get it over here in the stoker and sliding freely. Uh, we may have to take a little bit more scraping on there to get it all working like we want. But uh, let me, uh, I think I'm gonna take this over to, yeah, I think I'm gonna take it to my vise and put it in there and we'll, we'll just use the power scraper to scrape it real quick. So I think I'm gonna start by just taking a file and just kinda, I got a little ridge over here again. It's just kinda following the, the uh, contours of the uh, part that it was cast in, the trough over there. All right, let me get my scraper now and we will uh, scrape these, just the three sides, that's all that's making contact. I'm just gonna put a cross hatch pattern in it. All right, let's put a pattern in it. I'm just gonna put some crosses on it. Stuff is real soft. And we'll come the other direction as well. I'm gonna flip this up on its side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides and we'll go test fit it in there. Hopefully you can kind of see here how this crosshead works. This is gonna just go back and forth in this trough down here. We had previously machined this out. Uh, we got the Babbitt in here now. Now before I scraped this, it was really tight in here. Now there's no oil or anything in it right now, but it is going back and forth very nice and there's not really any side to side play on it to speak of. So I think we are ready to go ahead and try to put our connecting rod in here and make sure that everything goes. Now, when I poured this, I did have a piston rod that was kind of lined up in here, but this was kind of sitting down in here and it could 
twist in this direction. You know, I kind of just tried to get it as close to square as I could. I think I actually did put a square in here and try to square that up. But ideally we'd have the connecting rod connected in here so that everything was exactly in position. So now is the moment of truth. We're gonna put it all together and kind of see how that works. So let me get my connecting rod um, installed and we'll go from there. All right, this is connecting rod. We did put a new bearing um, in there. This is the wrist pin. We made new wrist pins. These were all turned. It's got tapers on this end, each end, and then there's a journal in the middle that fits up into the connecting rod. And there's a pin right here that just keeps that from spinning. On the other side, we've got a washer, and then there's a castle nut here that when everything is tightened up, you can put a pin through there to keep that from spinning loose. I'm not gonna put the pin in there yet, but you can see the connecting rod um, pivots, and basically that's about this whole range of motion is just gonna be about like that right there. Now, on this end down here, we've got um, a, our bronze bearing that will fit like this. This will fit over the connecting rod and there is a strap here that all this uh, will go on together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this kind of down into the bottom of the strap and we will go over here and get all this put in there next. Let me, let me see what we got to do here. I got my crankshaft back here. I've just got a uh, something here that I can turn that with. Let me go ahead and get the strap on the end here. It just kind of fits in there like such. We'll have to get that bearing properly positioned as it goes together. Get my crosshead down here in the slot. I'm going to slide that piston rod up right now. All right, let's see if we can get the bearing installed. I've got my back strap here. Bearing is on there. Now, let's see, we need to get this part of the bearing in here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and kinda get that bearing up in there where it belongs. Now let me pull my crankshaft back. And the crosshead will go on here. a wedge system here that tightens all this up. So let me kind of get that going as well. To tighten this up, there's a wedge or a series of wedges that drop down in here. So this wedge drops down in there and yeah, uh, I think that's in there. It clips in like that, and then there's a second wedge that comes down on the front of it like such, and you can adjust these in and out to um, tighten that up. So there's, and then there's a stud and a bolt in there that tighten all that together. Let me uh, get those. I'm gonna tap this together. Get it a little bit closer together down there. There's a stud that comes in there and a bolt that comes in here. 
and that's what tightens that up. Yeah, that is a little bit on the stiff side. I'm going to have to do some adjusting here to kind of get all these set just right. Um, yeah, give me give me a couple of minutes to play around with this and uh, get these adjusted a little bit better, and we'll give it a try. All right, I think I've got some adjusting done here, and I think. We are generally working, so I don't have the top straps on the bottom bearing right yet. Uh, there's a little cover that keeps these from coming up, but we can roll this through. And there's no oil in here right now either. I just kind of just want to see it go through the motion. So that's all the way forward. Bring it all the way back. all the way forward. And again, there's no oil in here. I'm just checking everything for clearance. But you can see the purpose of the crosshead. This piston has to run parallel up there in the front. It can't rock up and down like this connecting rod does. So the, the crosshead in between basically converts that up and down motion from the connecting rod and the, and the crankshaft to the linear motion going into the piston. So kind of see it roll through the paces here and again a little bit of lubrication will go a long way but I don't want to I got to heat this casting up uh, to pour this bearing over here and I don't want to get a bunch of oil in there to have to burn out so here we go I'm happy with that I'm gonna call that first bearing pour a success so the next step here for me I think is we're gonna take all of this back out again I need to get set up on the other one to pour the Babbitt. Uh, I need to get it cleaned up real good. There's a little bit of oil down in there that has, from where we were working up on this end, I need to try to get this oil cleaned out of here really well. And uh, we'll probably come back in our next video and get the Babbitt poured uh, on the other piston, other crosshead. But uh, I think we've got this pretty well knocked out. I'm happy with how this uh, it all went together. So I'm going to take it all back apart. Get these wedges out. Go ahead and take that stud back out as well. Let's see if we can get these to pull apart. Well, it is nice now that I've got these uh, new bronze bearings made to kind of have this project back on track again and moving forward. Um, I'm not aware of any major components that we don't either have in-house or what we need to make in-house from this point forward. Uh, take that back, pistons, rings, I've still got to get some of those uh, made as well. And I'll, I'm probably gonna order those. But um, other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. So we're moving forward on this project again. Glad to have it where we can do that. And I need to get this thing finished up and out of here as soon as possible so we can get it back up to the guys at Nashville Steam because they are getting really close to finishing that locomotive up. 
and they're going to be needing this real soon. So with that, guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments, they really help out with the algorithms on YouTube, help my content to be found by other people. So I appreciate you guys to take the time to do that. Also, big, huge thank you to those who support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube memberships, all of which are great ways to kind of help out around here financially with things. It takes a lot of time and effort to shoot the videos and do the editing and all that. So I'm just not always out here working in the shop. Uh, but anyway, that little bit extra really makes a difference. So to you guys that are doing that, thank you. If you're not doing that, I would encourage you to give it a thought uh, because it is greatly appreciated. And with that, I want to sign off. We're going to get out of here. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, as always, thanks for watching.